Good evening, I'm Molly O'Brien and welcome to The 7. Before we get to our list of big stories, we hope you'll take a moment and lend a hand to Project Grad. The Tools for Success Telethon is coming into its last half hour. You're looking at our phone bank. Since early this morning, people have been calling and donating. Money raised goes to support the work that helps young people here in Knoxville have the tools they need to excel in high school and go beyond, whether that's a two-year or four-year college experience or training for a career. Project Grad offers so much. You can call at 865-582-4985. We're taking calls for another 30 minutes or so. We'll check with our WATE 6 on your side anchor Lori Tucker here in a moment to get an update on the effort. Meanwhile, our top story tonight at 7 is the forecast for the hours ahead. The 6 door team actually putting us into weather aware status as of 4 o'clock. That might come as a surprise if you've been outdoors with all the blue skies and mild temperatures. So let's turn to Chief Meteorologist Ken Weathers. Ken, tell us what's about to change. Yeah, Lori, uh, Molly, nice to see you. If you've got any outdoor plans, enjoy. We've got lots of sunshine out there. A live look right now from Embassy Suites Hotel camera down towards the Tennessee River. It's gorgeous. We've had temperatures low to mid 80s today. We're still kind of hovering in that zone right now, including 83 in Knoxville. It's overnight that we're going to keep a close eye on. Showers and storms are starting to blossom now east of the Mississippi River. Those will push our direction a little later tonight. They'll weaken some as they get here, but the immediate threat for the worst weather certainly going to be closer to that cold front now. St. Louis to Evansville, just near Jonesboro, and even Middle Tennessee is that level two out of five risk, but notice it steps down to a level one out of five risk as it gets closer here to East Tennessee. So I do expect the storms to weaken some, but they can still produce some gusty winds and some hail overnight tonight. Timing about two to five across the plateau, closer to rush hour, three to six down through the valley and weakening, but still some showers and storms east between four and seven. So since these are an overnight time frame, make sure you have multiple ways you can get alerts, including our free weather app. No weather radio is great as well, but I mentioned there are two opportunities. The next round after midday tomorrow through 6 p.m. I'll talk more about the timing of that and take a look at your weekend forecast in just a minute, Molly. All right, Ken, thank you. A big update in that deadly shooting we brought you as breaking news around this time last night. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation now identifying the man fatally shot by a Knoxville police officer as William McBride Jr. Investigators say McBride was 41 years old, but shooting happening at a Fountain City gas station. The original call was about a disturbance with a man reportedly acting erratically and potentially aggressive. When an officer got to the scene, we're told he was confronted by McBride, who police say was armed with two knives. The officer then fired at McBride, hitting him at least once. He was rushed to the hospital, but died shortly after arriving. The TBI is taking the lead in this investigation, and the involved officer has been placed on routine paid administrative leave. And a big update in a fatal crash. We now know the identity of the motorcyclist who died in that wreck on Asheville Highway last night. Just after 10 officers responded to a wreck in the 6400 block of Asheville Highway near Rich Road. Officers believe the driver, 31-year-old Bradley Evans, was headed east when a Kia SUV was attempted to turn left from a Domino's Pizza. The motorcycle hit the driver's side of the SUV. Evans was pronounced dead at the scene. Knoxville police say speed was a contributing factor in the crash. The crash remains under investigation. And as temperatures warm up, the number of motorcycles out on the roads is increasing as well. Officers want to remind everyone to practice safety when it comes to motorcycles. And that doesn't just apply to riders, but also every vehicle that shares the road with them. According to the state of Tennessee, motorcycle crashes start increasing in February and average out in May. They don't start going back down until October. Make sure they look both ways when they pull out. Double check, make sure there's not a motorcycle coming. Um, some of the smaller bikes are not as noticeable. They're blind spots, interstate. Um, that seems to be a big issue. People cutting over, don't see the motorcycle in their blind spot. And a reminder for you this Saturday, Wrecking Crew Harley Davidson will be offering free safety inspections. Next on our big seven list, your generosity. You've been challenged, you've been calling with donations all day for the Project Grad Tools for Success Telethon. Anchor Lori Tucker joins us now from the phone bank. Hey, Lori. Hey, Molly. Let's go ahead and get everybody updated on the brand new total. Here we go. Fifty-seven thousand. 
$869,57,000. Oh boy, we are getting closer and closer to our goal of $65,000. Can we do it? Yeah! Give us a call, 865-582-4985, and let's send it back to Bali. The pedestrian bridge connecting the south waterfront to UT's campus is a hot topic right now. This morning, an information session was held at the Knoxville Chamber of Commerce building in Market Square, so the public is in the know for the entire process. Standing room only as people poured into the chamber building, all eager to know where the bridge stands at this time. Attendees had the opportunity to address their concerns and ask questions about the process as a whole. Many in attendance are in favor of the bridge, a sentiment shared by the city of Knoxville. Yeah, I mean, we're excited that the pedestrian bridge is a, is a, is a modern amenity that's unique and identifying for Knoxville, but also addresses safety, addresses multimodal transportation, and just addresses growth and experience in Knoxville. While the plan is still in the early stages, the wheels could begin turning even more later this year if the city is awarded a raise grant for $25 million. Another project in our Big 7 list, this one a planned road project in Blount County. And this time we're hearing concerns as it is raising issues for the town of Louisville. Officials are encouraging residents to voice their concerns to TDOT. The project slated for 2027 would widen the Louisville Road in between the Smith and Wesson facility and Topside Road by adding shoulders. The project was part of the agreement for Smith and Wesson to come to Blount County and would increase safety on the road, according to Jeff Muir with Blunt Partnership. However, Louisville Mayor Jill Pugh says the town did not have a say in the matter and the project would negatively impact residents. We're also concerned about our small businesses and the impact that this road changes would have on them and having to have a concrete median in the middle of the road. People would have to make U-turns, which is unsafe for our citizens. Uh, one of the biggest concerns is just the loss of revenue for our small businesses. Now, she also cited concerns about the town's watershed and pedestrians accessing the Greenway. We'll hear more about this project coming up later tonight at 11. Seymour Volunteer Fire Department is investigating what it's calling a suspicious fire from earlier today. According to the fire department, an abandoned home along Custick Hollow Road was destroyed after it was engulfed by flames. A Seymour Volunteer Fire Department spokesperson says it was a home that had been abandoned for a year with no electricity. The home has been deemed a total loss. The fire spread to nearby woods. Luckily, no one was injured and it has now been contained. We're told the cause of the fire is under investigation and is suspicious in nature. The Cumberland Gap Volunteer Fire Department is looking for help in getting a new fire truck. To do it, they'll need to raise so much money. The department is applying for a grant. It requires them to cover a portion of the cost. It's known as a local match. They're looking to replace a tanker truck, which helps carry water and pump water when there's a fire. The chief of the volunteer fire department says about five or six years ago, the engine on the tanker malfunctioned, leaving them with barely any resources. Right now, our current apparatus, we only have one engine that is capable of um, extinguishing any fires, um, no tankers. So that's, that's our biggest issue right now. The volunteer fire department says if the application is not fully funded, all the money raised will go towards upgrading equipment needed to support the firefighters. There's a GoFundMe available online. So far, almost $1,200 has been raised. $20,000 is needed.